Welcome to Tech London, a show featuring interviews with London's top creative entrepreneurs, startups, investors, design agencies, internet marketers, and freelancers that make up the Tech London online community, which mostly lives on the Slack instant messaging platform. We rotate through both hosts and guests for these interviews, so you have the chance to hear from multiple perspectives on London's tech scene. My name is Sean Winfield, entrepreneur, coach, and founder, and today I'm hosting for the Tech London podcast, where we interview creative entrepreneurs, startups, and investors, design agencies, internet marketers, and even freelancers. The current topic is smart cities and 5G, and I am super excited to be joined today by Tristan McCool. Tristan, hey, how are you doing? Hey, Sean, I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good. So I was, yes, as I said, I've been looking forward to our chat today. I happen to know your... Um, have lots of smarts about this about the space. Ted, tell us a bit about you to kick this off. Absolutely, great. Um, my name is Tristan. Um, I was the co-founder and head engineer of a London-based startup called Aura Innovation. Uh, what we were doing was creating a connected fleet commercial vehicle device, combining IoT connectivity and augmented reality visual interface. So it sounds quite complex, but essentially, it was a box that sat in a vehicle and sent GPS routing and driver performance logs to and from driver to dispatch. So it was a very exciting space to be in. Uh, by trade, I'm a telecom engineer, electrical engineer, so I can speak to the smart city space and a bit of the tech, you know, technology behind 5G, 4G, etc. So thanks for having me. Fantastic. So let, let's kick it off at like uh, at, at zero, like in terms of the smart city itself and what that actually means. Yeah, I think that's a good good place to start for sure. Um, smart city definitely is one of my favorite buzzwords because it's it's not really a thing, is it? Right? Like it's there's no definition. No geographical city has claimed to be a smart city. There's no real standard or criteria to bind something to being smart. Nonetheless, everyone knows about smart city, right? It's a word that is ever in everyone's vocabulary right now. Um, so we can just demystify that. I guess my go-to is the connected city. Certainly, I would argue that more and more devices and infrastructures are connected. The key word is on smart. Like I, I associate smart with functionality. Like you do on a city structure, like smart road lights or smart traffic maintenance, and that's how I envision the smart city. We live in this day and age, I'd say, with the connected city. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you follow that analogy, that's really cool. Because actually, when you think of smart city, it's just we think, oh yeah, it's something that's super cool, super easy to access, super super sort of able for us to do cool stuff with. But I suppose there's another thing around where we are now and where we want to be short term kind of versus a long term piece around that. Yeah, absolutely. Well it's it's I guess the question there is like how things become smart. Like things are continually innovating, right? So it's not as if a city m- sets a goal or mandates a smart agenda, things kind of creep up on you, right? It's that that boiled frog analogy where from one device to another, uh, you'll notice, for example, oh, the bank machine now has haptic feedback or it has a touch screen or it has voice recognition or I can enter my flat with an RFID keychain. So these are things that, that, you know, just innovation, right? It creeps up and before you know it, you're living in a smart city. Mm. So that's kind of a short-term, long-term technological roadmap. But I guess how how that plays out in the wild, the players who influence this, I guess in the very, very short term, are the big businesses, mm. the big, 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 you know, who who create these devices, the bank machines, the self-checkouts, the ones who have the the capacity to to really drive us innovation. In the medium term, I guess, is the small business and the startups who piggyback off these bigger platforms and create apps and create, you know, connected devices. And then at the longer term, I suppose, is cities themselves, cities and governments who place laws and, and build infrastructure around taxis or, or traffic lights or, you know, underground subway metro systems. 
so the diverse layers and players to what a smart city looks yeah. like and could look like. Yeah, I, and I think that's pretty scary when we think about the big players who are dominating this space and most likely will continue. It's already happened with telecoms anyway. Telecoms is is dominated, for example, by X amount of, of the key players and the little the little brands and the little innovation don't seem to be able to get through very easily. And it's you know it's, it's the same with each of them as you as you say. So when we look at the how this where this is all going, that's pretty scary that. Uh, everything is in the hands of, of those or government, for example. Well, yeah, that, that's a really good point you've just touched on is it's to the end user comfort zone, I guess, right? Like, I guess just to be devil's advocate here is who do you trust more, a big giant like Amazon or the UK government to set your device protocol standards? So, yeah, that's that's a really good point. And where the startups and smaller businesses can can make a difference unfortunately or perhaps fortunately depends on the big players like you know i don't want to seem pessimistic but no small business is going to drive that big of a change you have to play nice with the big players you have to be as they say interoperable with the big standards otherwise you know you're not going to come along with this brand novel idea to counter a technology like 5g you know from a five-person team you have to play nice with the big players um all while, you know, as I mentioned, being, keeping security in mind, data ownership, privacy. It's a complex ecosystem right now. It's very much like the wild west of the smart city, right? Things are very much unregulated up in the air, free dev. It's, yeah. it's an interesting, interesting environment to be in as a small business, for sure. It is. And we don't realize how much of it has already taken over and, and they just need to quite a lot of the time, they being probably big players and, and, and people that will help us take this to the next phase, just need to push a button because they already have all the access that they need. Right. We spoke earlier and we're talking about, you know, each household has, say, six to 10 devices already is is knowingly plugged into all of this. Right. Yeah. Well, that's that's, that's an interesting point is technology very rarely goes backwards. Right. Like. This, this, we've bit the hook now. We're, we're engaged with these smart devices. The smart city is definitely going to happen. It's better to get on board. Um, and I find people, people who are opposed to things are usually the people who, who know the least about it, right? You, you see that, that curve quite often. Mm. Um, and also, it's, you know, it's also funny to observe how quickly people observe, ab- abandon certain reservations for a little bit of luxury, right? Like, oh, I don't want big businesses spying on me, but oh, isn't it kind of luxurious and convenient that now I can open my door from my desk, you know? I agree, I agree. And the whole thing of the fingerprint thing, they they got that in there really easily, didn't they? Like, do we (laughs) just like, oh, God, fine, I can, oh, that's really cool. I can open my phone with my thumb. Yeah, but there is the fact that you now have your fingerprint uh, within the interface. Well, exactly. That's why I said, like, the last part of the of the smart city is is the infrastructure. Like, the, mm. the governments and the cities themselves are going to regulate, you know, what's what's fair and what isn't. Because if you leave it at the hands of, of bigger businesses, they'll, you know, take everyone's fingerprint. But yeah, it's it's interesting. Um, more and more devices are are connecting to each other, so certainly some vulnerabilities there. And I guess when you think smart city and IoT, you think GDPR and security. So I'm optimistic. I think things are, things are on the right track. Um, but yeah, I mean, not to go into this dystopian sci-fi movie, but it could very well happen, right? <laughs> it could, it I mean, happen. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the thing that we're missing as well, there are these points to bring to the table for sure. And it's really important to do these things properly. And I, you know, I think we do need to rework, rework a lot of that. But actually, it is pretty cool and super exciting. Uh, and it's it's fascinating where we're going to go with all of this, um, all of this for sure. So what about this sort of the whole 5G piece itself and 5G versus the 4G and what that what, what the relationship is there with regards to the whole this whole piece? Yeah, but that's that's great. That's the technology it's based on. Uh-huh. Right now, it seems to be 5G. In a couple of years, it could be another protocol. Um, I guess elephant in the room though is if you're building your entire city or i guess an analogy is you're building your entire home a smart home based on a protocol if that network goes down have you rendered your home less smart than you know than when you started off right is there a a pitfall here is there a gotcha so on the 5g 4g front um i think 5g is a really great advancement certainly has some very strong advantages better bandwidth better data capability better cloud connectivity 
uh, low latency, you know, just it, it's catching on. It's a good thing, despite you know, all the conspiracies around it. Those are, mm. you know, not founded anywhere, but you got to be careful if you're the, if you're five G hammer and everything's a nail, right? Like there are plenty of other long range IOT protocols and they're constantly being developed. And if you're a small business developing your, your tech platform, try and stay current, be aware. So, I mean, 5G definitely is, is, is now, it's the future, absolutely. Uh, from a design standpoint, you have to really consider your, your use case, right? Like 5G is powerful, but you can think of a simpler use case of a mesh network, for example, where mm-hmm. you do smaller hops from destination to destination, from device to device, smaller, smaller hops of that data rather than cellular tower and back. So it's a, it's a complex ecosystem. I know that doesn't really answer your question, but 5G, very powerful. Certainly a solid foundation to build a city on, I would say. Just for the, the tech specs alone, it's it's quite an impressive, powerful piece of tech. Yeah, yeah. It's it's still, again, you're right about we, we're having to, you know, definitely for startups and the innovators out there having to build around the infrastructures that we can play with at this stage, for sure. Um, if you were sort of um, giving any advice to kind of a startups or people doing this kind of building something right now. Um, what would kind of be your, your advice to startups in the smart city space moving forward? Yeah. Great question. Um, certainly talk to your head engineer, make sure they, they have some future proofing because like things move quick, but like, things are standardized they don't actually move that quick right 5g has been in the making for a long time and it's here to stay and it is quite a big infrastructure cities have to build the towers and so yeah like make sure you're you're future proofed you're not at the bleeding edge but you're you're in a safety zone there um because this could be like i said a 10-year decision right your iot roadmap your what you put under the hood uh is a big deal if you're going to build multiple products in your catalog make sure they all communicate to each other um, when we're talking 5G specifically and, and smart city devices, consider the data payload to the end user or to the end customer. So, you know, if, you're, if your device is quite data intensive, if you're sending videos, high payload, if that ends up costing your user more for their SIM card payment or to your, you know, intermediary customer who have to add an additional SIM card and add a cost, um, you know, that creeps up and that hurts margins and that makes design a bit less favorable. So definitely consider that. Mm -hmm. And like I said before, being that 5G hammer and a nail, in some cases, 4G, 4G fallback is perfectly fine for what you're doing, right? If if your payload is small enough, you you make the right data decision and the right payload decision. And to touch on the first point is playing nice with the big guys. If, If you don't, interrupt if, if you're not functional with the big players amazon google apple android you're doing something wrong there's there's no way you you're not compatible with these right like you have to at least at first be part of the ecosystem integrate your devices into the city that's a good way to future proof well right and also for people question. to buy in because if someone's buying into something and it adds value that's a great that's a great way in it's like look guys we know you've got the space but if you use this this brings x y and z to the table plus the end user finds it easy to adopt in terms of the things we were talking about before you know those seamless ways that things come through that we buy into this is the this is the very a way to help people adopt it really easily it seamlessly scopes in and then brands can grow from there can't they? they can start to become a maverick in the space but we need to buy into the fact that they become a habit to us first exactly right is exactly right is the is how the smart city and the smart devices sneak up on you it has to be easy adoption maybe a slight knowledge you know a little learning curve i suppose is totally acceptable but if you're making something smart it has to be an improvement it has to be easier it can't just be bells and whistles it has to serve a purpose so I think, yeah, that's also a fair, fair point is make sure you're you're not a problem looking for a solution, which we also see a lot in startups, unfortunately, is they've designed this, you know, newfangled device without really asking who needs this, right? So, and that's a problem across a smart city wide, right? Some some things are probably not going to stick around because they're, they're nice and flashy, but don't serve a longer term purpose. 
So yeah, yeah I mean, it all comes down to future proofing, future proof on your tech, on your use case, on your customer base. Yeah. And I think then for the end user, it's be aware of what you're doing. Can, you know, use the opportunity when we're having conversation like this about smart city to have a think about what you are doing with your tech and what you are integrating. Cause it's quite interesting. Is that, you know, tech is growing, you know, exponentially faster than we can even comprehend. So um, for us as sort of mere humans, it's actually, this is a fascinating conversation, but yeah, take a minute to have a look at what we're doing and where we're potentially going. It's important for day-to-day life and, and definitely with any business consideration or startup, you've got to think about where everything is heading because unless you take a bit of time thinking about that, you're not really going to get it until it sort of goes, it's here, guys, it's here. Everything's well, changed. <laughs> exactly. And that that's why like, I, I like the notion of smart city space. It's a good, like spart- startups are often put in boxes. Are you FinTech? Are you AR? And Smart city box is a good one to be in because there are so many commonalities between every city. Take a city in the world. Like there are certain things that are common to every city, you know, traffic or a subway underground system or you know, online banking, you know, like online retail. Like these are, are if you make it in new, if you make it in London, you're gonna make it in New York, so to speak. So it's it's a scalable space to be in from a smart city's perspective because you know, you crack one, you've cracked. 600 others right it's a good space to be in i mean if we if we ignore like all the fcc regulations and gdprs that put up some red tape but if your idea is sound in one market it's a pretty good chance you're sound somewhere else so it's a, it's a good space to be in and to my first point about it being perhaps like ill-defined and you know doesn't have that's a good thing use that to your advantage is, is you know break the mold you know to mm. be you know, to put a platitude around it, but you're, we're an interesting space where you can push innovation before the big players gobble it all up or before legislation makes certain devices um, impossible. Like, you know, I was in the automotive space, so I have a lot of experience there, but I, it could be in the next 50 to 60 years mm-hmm. that people owning a car is, is an obsolete idea. It could be that a city like London purchases so many million vehicles and they belong to the city and you lease a car like the idea of a car in your lot belonging to you like this is we're really challenging some ideas and ownership of of devices might change in the future so we're in this transition period so to speak yeah fascinating well we could talk for hours and hours but we're going to nip it in in the bud there tristan thank you so much for your time it's been great speaking with you likewise hope it was helpful it was nice to speak to you as well cheers thank you You've been listening to The Tech London Show. If you're interested in joining the community or even making an appearance on this show, make sure you join our Slack group over at techlondon.io. Till next time.